Hey, good evening once again, everybody. Welcome to the day two of the masterclass, Life and Personal Planning. I hope yesterday was uh, very, very exciting and uh, you took home a lot of things. So let's just start off by you know, reviewing a little bit of what we have done and uh, sharing what was your aha moment, you know, that wow moment for you, you know, for those, you know, uh, who are already in class, I think we are, we are, we're still waiting for about two more people, but before they come in, what will be your aha moment? Let's, let's, let's share that. Let's share that. Please, you can go to the chat box and quickly put that in. Put that in. Or if you want to also use the mic, please just with show of hands, we will recognize you and, and I will unmute you so you can, you can speak to the class. Maybe two or three people quickly. What would be your aha moment? Yes, who wants to build the... Okay, uh, can I call, call names then if we are not ready to? to... Call uh, Wali Nasir, good evening. What was your aha moment yesterday? Kola Wali Nasir. Yes. Okay. Kola Wali, can you speak to us? Okay. Uh, or oh, K okay, Bangui, can you speak to us? Share with us your aha moment yesterday. Yes. You have Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, I like I mentioned yesterday. Uh, it's still the uh, how, you know, defining mm. the how before you mm. you start executing. So, and the why, why, why are you doing what you're doing? Wow. Th wow. Those two, those two. I'm, I'm still, I'm still agitating. <laughs> <laughs> yes if your why is not deep enough you will lose steam along the road to your achievement if your why is not deep is not strong enough you will lose steam you will lose steam to get you there that's very very true thank you very much and um let okay Kola will share something on the chat box uh that he's not able to talk now okay that's okay you know I, I, but just listen in please Likewise, uh, okay, Ebenisa, Ebenisa Mabinuola, he said, things control you when you don't plan. Amazing. I love that take out. Things control you when you don't plan. Everything in creation, the forces in creation has been set on a plan by the creator. So is either you intentionally plan your way to, max, to, to leverage on them or they will exert their pressure on you able to obey what you know circumstances are planned so you, you know, it's just two things is that you plan intentionally or unintentionally you know people plan for you all right pascal said you know um everyone cannot be your audience and that's the truth everyone cannot be your audience thank you very much i love this i love this feedbacks okay these are aha moments all right Amazing. So let me share the screen so that we can go on to what I have to share with you today. Um, sorry. Okay. okay, sorry. This, this is not. Let me share the screen. Okay, this is screen. Okay. okay. Okay, please, can you see my screen? Is it clear? Is my screen clear? Maybe let me just do it. Okay. Okay, you said yes, it is all right. Thank you. Thank you. 
I just want to be sure that uh, I'm sharing the, the wrong screen. To share the screen. All right. We have a lot of things to do today. Okay. So let's let's look at what we have to do day two. Day two. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've, We've done a little bit of the aha moment. Let me just do a recap. You know, don't forget, yes, there was also a lot of interaction, and I also want today to be a lot of interaction. All right. Uh, we started from defining planning yesterday, and almost all of you gave me a perspective of planning. Pascal said it's putting together step by step process towards achieving a goal. So, step by step was critical step-by-step -step process was critical for him and goal. Peter Labi said something about pro, you know, planning being process of thinking and regarding the activities, in thinking regarding activities required to achieve a desired goal. So I underline process of thinking and desired goal. Tari Ogidi you know, uh, you know, uh, came up with this, that planning is an act of setting goals and working to achieve those goals, okay? All right, and which is good. So we, we underscored they are setting, all right? Setting, that is you are, you are determining what things will happen in future, all right? And, and Ebenezer Mabinola said, planning is intentionally, I you know for me there, you no know, something that jumped up at me was the intentionality, intentionally defining direction for the future, intentionally defining direction future that was very powerful or also Kola William Nasir said you know it's projecting into the future and putting in step-by-step -step approaches to reach the goal so projecting that is you know going out of the constraint of the now okay and moving into the future regardless of constraint in the environment that's what that projecting you know uh, uh, means to me okay regardless of constraint you are you are finding ways of overcoming constraints of your presence to achieve even the goal, you know, following, you know, uh, clearly stipulated approaches. Good. All right. Uh, Tulia Desire said it's, in, you know, he also underscored intentionality. He says intentional scheduling of tax and activities. But one thing that he had there that, that you know, we must not lose sight of is within a timeline. Planning without timeline is like wishes without the steam or wings to fly, all right? So planning without a timeline is like wishes without wings to fly. You must give it wings to fly, okay? You must, you must, you must, you know, uh, operate within a particular timeline you know, because don't forget the environmental factors operate within a particular timeline. They may change over time. And Jones Akin Wandi, you know, give a simple definition of planning being process for achieving a set target so there's a set target you know it's clear you know uh your your target is clear your audience is clear and if you remember i i you know uh while i was trying to summarize the whole thing yesterday you know uh, as a recap i said planning looks at using the model of the five w and h planning looks at you know the why the why being the most critical for planning but that's your purpose because we dealt so much about purpose yesterday we said planning is all about purpose. You know, you plan around purpose. And so this is a summary of, of, of the definition I, I, you know, because I didn't tell you exactly the definition, my own definition yesterday. I just told you what planning is all about, all right? And I said, it, it involves three things. Please, someone put on the chat box, those three things I said planning is all about. Three things, three things, three things. Remember three things? Number one, purpose, yes. Number two, yeah, good people at number three, the place. Good. All right. So I said, you know, so if you want to use those three critical things I've, I've shown you now, you know, planning will be a process of having a mental map of what you are all about, with or for whom you want to do what you wish to do. You know, what you wish to do is your goal. You know, using uniquely available resources, those are labor resources are what you call maybe the people aspect, you know, 
you know, all resources you know, are available. Okay, within the dynamics of operating environment and question of time, and that's the operating environment, that's the place. And it's all about attaining the purpose. The purpose is encapsulated in your vision, your mission and set objectives. So don't forget this is how I put it together. So it's having a mental picture of what you are all about, for whom and with whom you want to do what you wish to do using uniquely available resources at your disposal within the dynamics of your operating environment and constraint of time in order to attain purpose, vision, objective, because those are the three things purpose is all about. You know? So you know, you, once you put those three critical things in your pla into planning, your definitions will be comprehensive. So you know, I, I can twist definition and rephrase it this way. It's a process of mental mapping towards achieving purpose and desired end in sight. So purpose, being vision and mission, design and being objective, you know, plus actions to be taken or activities to be carried out towards getting there within dynamics, context, and constraints of your operating environment and available resources. So, you know, once you, you find a loop, whether you, you twist uh, the definitions this way or that, just ensure that the essential elements are there, okay? The essential elements are there. So, so this is how I would define it. Process of mental mapping towards achieving purpose, which is vision or mission, and desired end inside, which is the objective. Plus actions to be taken or activities to be carried out towards getting there. That there is your end point. That's there even is the goal, okay? And it's always within the dynamics, within the context, within the constraints of operating environment, and that's your place, and also the available resources, okay? Which you know, it involves your people, your, your time, involve material, money, and all that. All right. Don't forget, you know, uh, I made mention of certain things about purpose because purpose is so important. You know, purpose, first of all, about yourself, you know, you know ab about the person who is planning, about the organization that wants to plan. Purpose informs your why. We say it determines your vision, your mission, and your strategic objectives. And yesterday, I underscored the fact that any objective or goal that is not in line with your purpose therefore constitutes a distraction. Any objective or goal not in line with your purpose constitutes a distraction and is an unnecessary weight. And uh, just like um, Mr. Kunle said, he said, no, he reminded us when the why is not deep or strong enough, people give up on their pursuits. So you must create a strong why. Why are you, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you still working there? You it must be deep enough. Why are you pursuing that goal? A lot of people, they set their goal January and by February, it's forgotten because there's no strong why. So purpose, which is all about your why is critical to planning because it is a sustaining fuel for attaining your life's goal. And I dare say that where your why is not strong enough, purpose become elusive. Where your why is not strong enough, purpose becomes elusive. Don't forget that. This is very, very important. Okay, so that's the summary about yesterday. All right. And you know, part of, of, of why do we plan? You know, we, we, we mentioned three things yesterday. So I'll just recap. It says, you know, uh, we plan to introduce and enforce order in and on our life. You need even the pressure of order to be able to be fruitful, multiply, me, you know, mentor or, or pass at, into the next generation, even the success even, uh, that you have, so that you'll be sustainable. Else, success is not sustainable into the future without planning. And we said the dominion mandate of man itself cannot be attained here on earth without proper planning. Can you imagine if there were no human beings on earth, because it is only, don't forget, I said, planning is a higher order activity within you know, uh, the human race, all right? Other animals don't do the kind of orderly plan that we do. So can you now imagine if there were no human race here? Because planning itself you know, you know, is, is, is our exclusive preserve, okay? If there were no human race, where you are there, will still have been a thick forest. 
Just imagine where you are seated. Hundreds of years, 200 years, thousands of years ago, it was a thick forest. Animals were, were roaming all around. But because human came to the stage, and because of their higher other faculty of thinking and planning, they envisaged a future that could be there. And that's why you have houses where you have, you have roads where you have, and you are living in a city today. So planning is so important. And I said, you know, you know uh, planning forces order on your life because orderly environment is a natural habitat for man to fulfill and explore his potentials based on the story of Adam in the, in the garden, not in the bush. Then we said, planning orders your thoughts. It directs and, and helps you harness your effort for maximal and optimal utilization of resources at your disposal. Resources are scarce, we, we said yesterday. So if you want to optimize and maximize them, you have to plan. Planning to use them to the best, okay, of uh, your capacity and understanding. Then we said planning also helps humans to understand themselves. That's why we started with purpose. Understand their strengths and understand their limitations. So when you plan, you will be able to know, you know how to play to your strength and you want to minimize your limitations or your weaknesses so as to maximize life and achieve your goals. All right, so the fourth thing today, therefore, why do we plan? So planning helps humans identify resources needed to actualize the invisible visions and dreams that is in their mind. Because planning, don't forget, I said it's the mental mapping that now you make concrete on paper that you write out, all right? So it, as you begin to write out those things, you begin to identify, okay, because you know, don't forget it, it, it has to do with the five W and H, okay? So you, you know, look, look out for what do I need as resources to fulfill this? So I therefore said here yeah, that, you know, uh, it is an act of belief that puts structure to your faith work. If you believe that, you know, uh, you have a strong impression to do something. You know, that, that is just, you know, uh, you know uh, a belief, but not until you plan, not until, no, then you are showing that you believe in what you believe in and you, you, you are going to work it out. So it's the first act of belief. Then acting on that plan is the secondary and finishing act of belief in the faith work. And you must understand this, all right? Then you must understand also a fifth reason why we plan I said, visions and dreams become mere ejaculation and emasculation of energy without ability to bring forth physical manifestations, except they are guided and guided by proper plans. So I said, you know, dreams and visions are mere mirage. They will never amount to anything without plans. They are guided into fulfillment and fruition by proper plan. Um, and the sixth is, you know, uh, is the fact that Planning helps each actor to see the end from the beginning. Don't forget I said, this ability of planning even is an exclusive thing to God, which is bequeathed to human beings made in his image and very likeness. God sees the end of the, of the matter from the beginning. And so he gave man that kind of ability to project into the future and to plan towards getting there. So it helps you to see the end from, you know, if you do a well laid out plan, you will almost have a mental schemata, a mental picture of what the end will be. And that's, that's why, you know, if and when you do any plan and the end in sight is not so clear, you have not planned well. I repeat, whenever you do any plan for the year, for the month, for your family, for the business and all that, and the end in sight is not very, very clear and the purpose is not, is not clear also, then that's not a good plan. The end in sight must be clear when you do a good plan, all right? And likewise, I said here, good plans mysteriously and naturally attract resources. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. It's a spiritual thing. But good plans, because when you make good plans, okay, resources naturally line up and they're, they're attracted. Because it positions the human mind in the right wavelength of value delivery. And don't forget, human beings are created on the earth to deliver value, to, to replenish, to subdue, 
and to have the opinion, to, to, you know, to make the world even that better picture, replicating even what God wants us to do here. So he positioned the human mind in the right wavelength of value delivery and difference making on the earth created by God. So this is very important. So when you, when you, you, you find that look, when you make good plans, resources will flow. Your mind goes to work. Your mind is a servant when you plan. When you don't plan, your mind becomes your, your ruler. I repeat, when you plan, your mind goes as a servant towards providing resources for those things that, that are your strong reasons and, and your fixation even in, in the plan. However, if you don't plan, you will live as a slave and as a servant to your mind. Because it will just, the mind is so hungry. It wants to go, go to work. If you don't plan, it takes on whatever it sees and will feed you. And you know, whatever happens to your life, you are the mercy of your mind. So please don't forget this. This is very, very important. This is, you know, I'm already you know, taking you a little bit into the mind sheet series. The mind sheet series. Those who will but you know uh, enroll for that class is a, is a, is it's a neurolinguistic even session, it's totally different. It will change your mindset totally. But I just gave you that little bit. All right. Now, uh, the eighth reason why we plan is that good plans guarantee no less than 50% of success in life. And that's why the common saying is true, that he that fails to plan has planned to fail. The ninth reason why you must plan is that good plans ensure and assure replicability, teachability, and transfer of knowledge to future generation. That's why it guarantees sustainability. And also it guarantees a bounce back from failure and derailment, if that occurs, because there is a traceable path. Good, good planning and good plans gives you a traceable path. What did I do to get air? A lot of people who are planless, when you ask them, how do you get there? They won't be able to tell you. God wants you to plan. It is his high order, even capacity that he has passed on to man. He doesn't want things just to happen to you per chance. He wants you to happen to things. He wants to shape the world. Can you imagine if all human beings are people who don't plan? Will we have the, 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 all the things we have in the world today? Will you have a, a whole house flying in the air like a plane? If there is no, no, so no. Because there was proper plan through research, they tested it. They, under, they understood it, even the, the, the laws of aerodynamics and how to beat the law of gravity. And they put that metal together and, become, and began, began flying. And you know, since the first glider made by the Wilbur brothers, which, which subscribed to this law of aerodynamics and, and, and the first you know, flying object, since then, because the, the Wilbur brothers outlined clearly the, the process that led to them making that, people could improve on it. So improvement and civilization happens to mankind when you lead a plan for the next generation. That's what one called sustainability. So, so I, I, I therefore surmise that so-called successes without proper plans are flukes because they are not teachable. You must be able to teach the next generation what you did and how you got there. Without plan, you won't be able to, to put your finger on that. All right? So, so proper plan you know, uh, makes success teachable, transferable, and replicable. And the tenth reason why I, 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 I surmise that you should plan is that planning is the only basis for measuring progress on the path of success in life. If you don't plan, how will you know that you are advancing, you are, you, know, you are making progress in life? So in terms of measurement and evaluation, planning is critical. You have milestones along your plans. So you will know how far you have moved towards your goal, towards your end in sight. Without planning, measurement is impossible. And so you, you cannot evaluate the level of success you've made in life. These are very critical. Okay, so now exciting, we'll be you know, looking at three tools 
in planning. I call them simple tools. You know, I really, uh, for this one, uh, one hour or so session, I was to just take one tool, but I want to give you a pro bono of two additional tools. That's why, you know, I, I told you earlier on that, look, please, you, you know, you just extend about 30 minutes I, that you join this class. I want to give you three tools you can use. You might not have heard of you know, the SEC, you know, or S-E-R-C tool, but I will teach you a little bit about that. Then there's the SWOT you know, and the PESO. I think you should have heard about that, you know, uh, but we will we'll look at, you know, how you can use this to plan. Number one, plan your life, plan your marriage, plan your business, plan your career, plan your profession, profession plan everything in life. 2000, the next year we are going into, 2000, 23, you know, should be a year of difference, a year in that you make unprecedented in, 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 uh, improvements in every area of your life if you, you adhere to using these tools. Let's see. They are, they are proven tools that people have used and can help you. The first tool by Josh Besson is what I call the SEC tool, S-E-R-C. It says if you will plan, particularly maybe it's for professional or your, for business success. You must look at four major things, your skills, your experiences, your relationships, and the context. Again, your skills, your experiences, relationships, and context. These are critical. And I will, I will speak to this very quickly. You know, he said, these four areas are the secret for professional and business success. Let's look at skill. You must, first of all, please, please, I want us to begin to do some reflection and introspection as I take you through this. Because this is a workshop and also is an engagement session to move something within you so that you'll be able to move something on the outside. If, some, if nothing moves on your inside, nothing can move on your outside. It subscribes to in that law that you, everything exists in a state of, 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 of stability or no motion, except an external force is applied. So, so I said it this way, that if nothing moves on your inside, nothing will move your outside. So you must move something within your gray matter. Something must move in your passion. Something must move on your inside before you begin to create waves on the outside. This is very, very important. Everything in creation stands at ease until an external force is applied. You must apply that external force even now as you cause true knowledge, something to move on your inside. Now skill, skill. The first question was asked about skill is what technical, professional or managerial skills do you possess? I am using pause to let it sink in. Again, what technical, professional, or managerial skills you possess. Don't forget that skills are graduated into three levels based on even the level you are in your career, all right? But you must have a dose of this and you must be able to identify them. If you must make plans for the next move in your career, for the next product offering you want to give to your market, what technical, professional, and managerial skills do you possess? And skills are defined as the granular areas of expertise on specific tax system or practices. Are you a tailor? What skills do you have in terms of technical? Can you cut, can, do you, can you cut clothes using patterns? And you'll find that if you can cut clothes using patterns, you will provide within your tailoring school, okay, a replicable way of making standardized clothes. Because exactly that is what is done even by people who, 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 who do mass production. They use patterns. But if you have not learned the discipline of use pattern to court, it might be difficult to replicate the same standard all the time. So that I'm just using an example. Are you an HR person? What technical skills do you have? What professional skills do you have? What managerial skills do you have? Or you have never been exposed to the managerial skills. You, you only have technical skills. And you are looking at, in the next two years, becoming maybe a middle-level manager. So you must get managerial skills. So you know, this makes you to know what you have now, what you don't have, and what you must in, improve upon. The next thing linked to skill is your experiences. What level of exposure or experience do you have? 
in first of all, designing, implementing, measuring, or improving various solutions in the field of your operation. Whatever field of operation you are, businessman, careerist, minister, you know, uh, in the vineyard, uh, you know, missionary, whatever. What level of exposure? Don't forget your experience and exposure will inform on your, on your delivery. Your experience and exposure will, will, will affect your performance. So, you know, the first level of experience and exposure will be in designing. Some people are just very good in designing, they can't implement. Some people can implement, they can't design. Even after doing, doing this, do you know how to measure even in, in terms of the impact on the market? Do you know how to measure you know, the, 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 the value you are delivering so as to quickly come and recalibrate to improve upon it? So these are things you must, you must consider as you go into the year. What is your level of experience and exposure? As a teacher, what's your level of experience and exposure? Are you only exposed to your kindergarten or you have been experienced even to teach from kindergarten even to, to secondary school or to university level? Is, the, is that level of, 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 of experience deep enough as to prepare you for the next level, next phase in your life? Have you implemented those solutions, for instance, in small companies, in small organizations, small groups, or in large groups, globally, internationally? If you're looking for an international job, where, what kind of experience do you have here while you're working in Nigeria? Have you work, worked with a multinational company, which can give you a, a strong, strong, uh, uh, maybe selling point if you, if you now apply even to, to uh, maybe, a global company outside of Nigeria. So if you don't have the required experience that will match the, the, the future and the vision you are seeing, what should you do now to get those experience? This is all about life. Don't forget we're doing life and personal planning. So what should you do to get those experience? Some people may be determined to, uh, to do what we call volunteer in those kind of organizations that they are having their eyes to go into in the future. Why it's still keeping their day job? And in this time and age of, of virtual uh, workspace, not workplace anymore. Don't forget, you know, today we don't have workplace anymore. We have a workspace. Because anywhere that, that productive venture can happen is, is, is the place of work. You don't need the brick and mortar before you, you are in the office. So this is very important. So, so I'm saying sometimes you, you, in this era of virtual workspace, you, you may even apply even to work in those type of organizations that you have a mind of joining in future by volunteering right here from Nigeria or right from anywhere you, you, you are now. So you, you must, come up with strategies to implement even the vision you have. So as to give you the right experiences that will count for you when you show up in the future. You know, I, this, this story about this young lad called David always comes to my mind. He didn't understand the experiences even, you know, uh, that, that, uh, that life was exposing him to when, you know, he was keeping the, the sheep. He was given one, one mania job and pushed the background in the family. But he understood that work is not only to give you money, work is to give you experience also. And so he went with the right attitude to garner the right experience and exposure. So while there, he met some challenges and circumstances. Some challenges were in the size of a bear. Some challenges were in the sight of a lion. He found a way to confront these challenges, surmount them, and to give value to the family for which he was working. Not knowing that Providence was pro preparing him for, for even a greater challenge that will require the experience that he has had. And one day, suddenly, he met a, a different kind of challenge called Goliath. But don't forget, what he could leverage upon was the experience and exposure 
of the lion and the bear. So I'm saying, my emphasis here is this. Please, whatever you are doing now, it might not be bringing money. If you understand that part of what you are going, you, 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 you are learning on, on, on the job that you have now is number one, skills. Number two is experience. Then you are building relationships and you, you know, which I will go into. Then you are understanding how to manage context. And I will go into these two, two other things. So these are the four things that your present job is giving you. Or if it's not a job, if you are, you know, uh, a, a, maybe a stay-at-home mother or father, you know, you can still learn these things. You can still learn these things in whatever con context you are. In. So the fourth thing you must look at that is the key to a secret in professional and business life is your relationships. Look at your career. There will be people within your cycle of influence and cycle of interest. Cycle of influence that people look up to you. People you have, you have, you know, you have, you have passed a virtue across to, knowledge across to. You know, they've interacted with you and they've collected something good. They've enabled you to, to, to do try and error <laughs> with their lives and that's paid off. Your cycle of interest are people you are looking up to. Okay, and you still have them within your relationship. So who are those? Or who will you want to bring into your cycle of interest in the future? So as to, don't forget, all of these things are linked to achieving your purpose. So in your career history or whatever, ask yourself, who have I met that can advise, help, mentor me or coach me? Ask another question. Who are those valuable suppliers or third party partners that I can quickly rush to if I am in this kind of problem in my career, in my marriage, in my home? You depend on whichever area you, want to, you are planning on. And how quickly can I get, get that kind of assistance from them? That depends on how you have, uh, how you have serviced the relationship. Don't forget, please, in relationships, let me, you know, even though the networking class is a different one, but let me tell you something about relationships, which is all about networking here. You don't maximize relationships when you wait until you have a problem before you go to the person that can help you. Again, you don't maximize the benefit of relationship. If you are waiting, for a time in which you will have problem before you go to the person that can help you. And you know, even for those who are spiritual, you will understand that you don't wait for a time of problem before you go to God. Your relationship must be cut out with God. So that, you know, it's not only problem that drives you to him. And so also, if you have a, you know, a, a mentor, a brother, a boss, that is only problem that takes you to him, you are not servicing the relationship even when there is no problem. You will soon be forgotten. You will, not, you will not be in the top of mind awareness of the person. Your toma will be low. Top of mind awareness, toma will be low. You will not be in, the, in his face or her face. So please don't forget, oil your relationships. I repeat, oil your relationships. Don't wait for problems to push you to those people within your cycle of influence and interest. Reach out to them at least once a month. The person, you know, that you don't reach to out to maybe in two years and problem comes and you not pick your phone. Uh, uh, yes, it, you, number one, the recency of your name will not ring in his ear. Number two, the person may feel that, aha, uh -huh, so it's his problem that brought you to me and may feel reluctant to help you. So the, don't forget the journey of success is not a lone journey. It's a, it's a joint journey. You cannot attain your future and purpose all by yourself. You need other people. Now, let's go. So, so you must, don't forget, extract your relationships. Who in your relationships is an addition, a multiplier? Who in your relationship, as you go into the next year, are subtractors and dividers? You, 
you must be intentional because we said purpose is about it and planning is about intentionality. You must be intentional maybe to reduce relationship with those dividers and, and subtractors and increase relationship with those multipliers and and, 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 and addition addi and, and additions to you know those who are to your life. Then you must also look at where am I going within my, my sphere of inf you know, influence and cycle. Do I have the kind of people that have achieved and attained the picture of where I'm going? If you don't have, go intentionally to look out and make acquaintance, friends, network, relationship with those who have the kind of future you are looking for. Because it rubs off. Begin to follow them as role models. Begin to follow them as mentors. Pay to go for their coaching classes. Being in the environment where they are does a lot to you. Don't forget I'm doing life and personal planning. This is critical. So uh, the first is assess yourself in these three areas we have studied. Skills, experiences, relationship. Where are you? How rich are you in these three things? The next thing now is your context. Don't forget, I'm, doing, I'm using the, the, the psych model, S-E-R-C, by Josh Besson, all right? He said, context, you must appraise, assess your in terms of context. Are you aware of the personal specific issues at play within your environment? Your working, your, 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 the place, the field, the mountain of influence, are you aware of the PESEL specific issues at play? I will explain what PESEL is in the next slide. Don't worry. As that's another, another tool needed for planning. Okay, so I will explain it more. The other question under context, under the field, under the mountain of influence, under the locale within which you are operating your business, you desire to pursue a career. And that question is this. Do you, after understanding the operating environment, do you have enough skills, experience, and relationship to leverage on the opportunities with, within the context of your operating environment? Or do you have enough skills, experience, and relationship to help you maximize the benefits given by your um, operating environment. So those are the questions you must ask yourself. Don't forget all professional and business solutions exist within a, a locale, within a world of local, ever-changing context. And this context may be both inimical or maybe either inimical rather, or enabling to your success. They may either be blockages, obstacles, or enablers and leverages to your success. So if, they are, if the context is, will be inimical, harmful, as obstacle, what should you do? Those are the things you must begin to ask. What would be your strategic move to turn the lemon, uh, the, the, the lemon into lemonade? What would be your strategic move to turn blockages into steps in life? These are the things you must consider, okay? Now, so don't, I will speak about that reference to pestle, pestle tool later, but I want us to go into this second tool called the SWOT, the SWOT analysis. This uh, was uh, another tool for planning uh, developed by Al, Al, Albert Humphrey in the 1960s also. Pestle was also in the 1960s. Seems a lot of things happened in the 1960s. I mean, it's just funny. So SWOT analysis was first of all uh, mentioned by this consultant, you know, who worked uh, and, and management expert who worked with Stanford University. He said there. Are, he also said there are four areas you must look at if you want to do proper planning. Proper planning, whether personal, whether business, whether family, whether organization. You must look at the strength, the weakness, the opportunity, and the threats. He said the first two at the top, strength and weakness, are internal. They have to do with you. 
and the, 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 the second construct, opportunity and threats below, they are external. It says strengths speak to the characteristics of your business or your person, which give you advantage over your competitors. And you must understand that there are different kinds of advantage in, in strategy. No, I'm not talk, teaching about that today, but you must understand that there can be competitive advantage, comparative advantage, and distinctive advantage. Okay, uh, maybe you can come to my strategy class to learn about you know, various kinds of advantage in business and how you can use it even to win. All right, okay. But you must understand that everyone have certain things that gives you advantage over your competitors. Everyone, if you look deep enough and we'll do that exercise tonight where you will have to, to, to also, you know, don't call it, Planning is not only about you know, having it in mind, but putting it on paper. Okay, paper do, does not forget. No, the, the, the weakest of paper, someone said, is, best than the, is, is better than the best of minds. Someone says, the weakest of paper and pen is better than the weakest, uh, uh, than the best of, of, of the brilliant, uh, brilliant mind. So the best of brilliant mind that does not put down things, you know, you find that it will not be effective because you, know, you won't be able to carry it out you know, it will soon forget it or we'll be able to pass it on to the next generation. So the weakest of pen and paper is stronger than the best of the brilliant, most brilliant minds. Don't forget that. So write things down. Write, write, write. Write is a spiritual command. Write on table. Put it down. Write it. This is a secret to winning. All right. The second thing they said is weaknesses. You must be able to Extract, identify, put your finger on what are my weaknesses, the characteristics affecting my business and putting it to a disadvantage relative to my competitors. Characteristics affecting me as an employee, as a manager, putting me at an, a disadvantage relative to my other managers in place of work. If, for instance, you have you know, various people, the head of of finance, the head of HR, the head of operations, the head of marketing and all that, and they want to choose the next MDCO. Why would they consider other people above you? You must do this. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? So that, you no, know, don't forget, please, when you do the SWOT analysis, you are not doing it exclusive of the objective and the purpose. All of this analysis, whether it's SEC, whether it's SWOT, must be relative to where you are going, the objective and the purpose. Else, it will not be strategic. And you know, we'll speak about that. So please, this is important. Op opportunity is what the O stands for in SWOT. These are the, don't forget opportunities that are external to you. These are elements in your external environment that allow you to formulate, formulate and implement strategies to increase prof pro you know, profitability. These are, you know, these are opportunities that, you know, are things that gives you options, advantage and alternatives, okay, to increase your value, to increase even your impact, to increase profitability, all right? Because your life also, you must treat it as a business. Treat your life as a business and evaluate each time, am I making profit? Now, the T in SWOT, in SWOT is about threats. What are those elements in the external environment? Don't forget threats are also outside. Don't forget I've said strengths and weaknesses are within you as an individual or an organization. Well, opportunities and threats are external to you. Okay, so threats are elements in the external world or you know, your, your operating environment that endanger the integrity and profitability of your business. It endangers the sustainability of your business. It can close down your business. So please don't forget this. This is very, very important. You must be able to identify both the strengths, weakness, opportunities, uh, uh, all the strengths, weakness, opportunities, and, and threats. Okay, quickly, let's go on. All right, I just, you know, this is just a summary of what I've said. Uh, strengths are internal enablers. These are your advantages and all that. And they are always, no, no, they are within your control if you identify them and you make good use of them if you identify them and make use of them. Weaknesses are your internal limiters, obstacles or dis, dis en enablers. These are disadvantages. So 
your, your role is to control or minimize them, while opportunities are the external enablers. You have to leverage upon them. That's your role. While the threats are external limiters, obstacles, or disenablers, you are to avoid, minimize, okay, or go around them, okay, so as to reach your end point, your objective, and your goals, okay? So uh, this is just, you know, uh, a little bit of what I want you to do. I will, I will enter into it. So when you are looking at your threat, look, look at things like what you are good at, what will help you move forward, you know, what qualifications you have, your experiences you have, your skills you have, you know, don't forget. You know, so all the things in, in the SEC, the skill, the experience and exposure, and, and um, you know, the relationship you have may be your strength, all right? May, may, may be part of your strength, okay? But sometimes also part of your, they, they may be also be part of your weakness. For instance, the size of a country may be a strength, but if not well harnessed and used, the same size of a country may be a weakness. Again, the resources like oil, natural resources may be a strength, but the same resources, if not well harnessed and used for the, for the benefit of moving the country forward may become a weakness. <laughs> so any strength not well identified, not well harnessed, and not well used becomes a weakness. So please don't, don't forget. So it's two, two sides of a coin. Okay, weaknesses therefore are things you still need to learn to work better on or harness and to, 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 to maximize to, your, to the advantage of achieving your future goals. And you know, when you want to look at you know, opportunities, you're looking at projects that may, you may take up in future, you know, uh, you know, openings, you know, uh, 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 future opportunities and, uh, and, and alternatives that that's open up to you, new contact, contacts and, and that, that you, you can make, okay, uh, that, that just open to you or you just met you know, at the conference and all that. No, those are your opportunities, okay? Maybe, uh, you know, there is a, a loan facility to go post, you know, that has been opened up in your place of work for those who want to do their masters or do want to, those are opportunities. Take them, take them, okay. Then the threats are, you know, uh, what you can ask questions like, what are the main skills needed that you are not working on? If you're not working on it, don't forget, success is opportunity that makes preparation. If you don't prepare, it's a threat. It's a threat. You want to become, you know, out of those, all, all of those heads of units and departments, you want to become the CEO and you're not preparing. You should have, what, what job description you know, uh, uh, exposure, experience, even is required of the CEO. If you have done an evaluation, you will fall short of it. Why not prepare, take it as an opportunity to, to, to quickly learn and prepare to have those, those exposure experiences and skills. If you don't, it's a threat. It limits, it's an obstacle to you getting into that role. Okay. So likewise, you get to ask questions like, is there something new in the field that you must learn? If there are new things, a dynamic field, and you, you, are, you are still doing bookkeeping, when people have gone, you are still doing the, uh, uh, you know, in accounting, there is the old um, uh, kind of accounting, and this new, uh, you know, is the IFRS, uh, IFRS, you know, accounting, you know, but you are still on that old one and all that, <laughs> you know, you won't be relevant in this new thing. And so, People may not come to you anymore. All right, this is very, very important. Okay, so I've said something about your SWOT. I've made mention of, of, of it briefly. Your SWOT must be strategic. What I mean, your SWOT must be focused on your objectives, on your purpose, else it's not strategic. And now, you know, uh, there are critical things, uh, there are certain things that makes your, your SWOT strategic. It must be critical. When you are doing your SWOT analysis, the things that you choose as your skill must be very, very important. The things that you are looking at as a weakness must be very important towards achieving your goals. Important for, for you realizing your purpose. The things you are looking at as opportunities are not just mere opportunities, they are critical. And the things you see as threats must be critical. That's one. Number two, they must be long-term. Things that will pull you through that career in the long run, even though, we agree that in a very dynamic world in which we are, we are the prevailing personal framework changes with time. So you must also look at it as it changes and reevaluate yourself, your SWOT, 
Your strength yesterday may become your weakness today because the environment has changed. Your opportunities have changed. The threats have changed. While your weakness yesterday may become your strength today. So you must be on your toes. So you must you know, have a longer perspective of your goals and your purpose while reevaluating your SWOT. Then you must be integrating. Everything must work together. Okay, your strength, weakness, opportunity, and trend must work together towards delivering the purpose, the vision, the mission, all the strategic objectives that you have. So please don't forget these three characteristics of a good SWOT, critical, long-term horizon, and integrated. This is very, very important. Okay, well, I wrote certain things here, you know, because I said uh, SWOT should be dy dynamic. So the, as, as the um, operating environment changes, you must be asking several, several questions. For instance, you know, uh, if you are looking at your strength, there's, you know, uh, there are some questions you can ask, like, like, what advantage do I have that others don't have? Maybe skill, maybe certification, maybe education. What do I do better than anyone else? What personal resources do I have access to? What do other people, maybe my boss in particular, see as my strengths? What values do, do I believe in? Positive values that help me to, to achieve better, okay, that others fail to exhibit. Okay, you know, am I within a, a LinkedIn group, a network and all that, that is giving me even better benefits, connection with influential people in my profession and all that? Look, you must begin to look at this. Don't forget, both your strength and your opportunity are positive, while your threats and your weaknesses are negative. While also in strength and weakness are internal and opportunities and threats are external. So you must ask all these questions. But these questions must be asked time and time again because within the context of time, I've, I've told you strength may change to weakness. You, a strength a, you know, may not be a strength for life. So you must understand that it changes within the context of your operating environment. Some of the questions you may ask in opportunities, what new technologies you know, uh, do we have now that can help me deliver on my, my, my purpose? Okay, on my strategic objectives. Is the, is the industry growing? Or do I need to, to, to move to a newly opened up industry? Opportunities of traveling overseas is very, very big now. Do I want to take that opportunity? What opportunities are here in, you know, as people are traveling out, are doing their Japanese? What, what opportunities are here in my local base country that is left behind that I can tap into if I want to stay behind? So you must you know, look at all this, all of this. Okay. Uh, what trends, whether management or, or so, do you see in your company, do you see in your environment? Okay, are, are any of your com competitors failing to do something important that you can leverage on? Okay, is there a need in your company or industry or your ministry that no one is feeling? You can step into it and volunteer. These are opportunities. You can look at areas of threats, threats like, you know, and ask questions like, what obstacles do you currently face at work? It's an but, but if you have the right mindset, you can turn the threat to an opportunity. By seeking solution for that obstacle, you can turn it into a value and a solution for the organization, and you can be known for it. Goliath was an obstacle. Everyone was running for him, from him. He was a threat. However, by confronting him and giving victory to his people, David became celebrated. So you must, you must, you know, with the right perspective, the right skill, the right attitude, the right tools, you can turn threats into opportunities, depending on you, right? So other question you can ask in threats is, are any of your colleagues competing with you for projects, roles? Okay, they are competing. They are threats, yes, if they are better in what is required. So you must, this will help you to also consider what you should do. Is your job? or the demand of the things you are, you are doing, are they changing very fast than how you are improving yourself? It's a threat. You must be improving. You know, I, I think Jim Rohn said, you must work on yourself harder than you work on your job. That's what Jim Rohn said. Work on yourself harder than you work on your job. Ask questions about technology. Is changing technology threatening your position? If so, why not learn how to use that technology so that you, you change your role to a technology-based role? 
Can any of your weaknesses lead to threats? Ask those questions. Questions to ask in, in weaknesses, what tax do you usually avoid because you don't feel confident about doing them? So what do you want to do about them? You want to delegate? Do you want to learn? Do you want to understudy someone who is good at it? Ask yourself, you know, you must provide solutions. I said, this kind of introspective questions in planning helps you to know what actions to take so as to achieve your purpose and your goals. What will people around you see as a weakness? You want to ask them. So ask other people to give you feedback. It helps you to know what to do to improve as the new year comes. What are the negative work habits you have? Indolence, procrastination, short temper, poor handling of stress. You come late. You don't take ownership. You act irresponsible. These are negative work attitude that will not help you achieve your purpose and your goals. You must plan around them. Do you want to to put yourself under an accountability partner to help check you. Do you want to begin to, if you are someone who is poor in time management, you know, what would, you know, things, what strategy will you put together to help you? So you must be able to think about this. In my course, you know, about personal development plans, effective personal development plan, and I teach you how to do this step by step, set your strategies, you know, you know, the right tools and, and how to overcome in the weaknesses. All right. So, also ask a question on that weaknesses, a question like, do you have personality traits that hold you back in your field? For instance, if your field has to do with meeting people, being very, very outspoken and all that, but you, you are in that field as someone who is introvert, is a personality trait that will keep you back. If you don't learn to go out of your shell, okay, and live up to the expectation of what is expected in that field. This is very important. If you are to conduct meetings on a regular basis, for instance, or you know, uh, but you are afraid of public speaking, ha, that's a major weakness. So you must learn how to overcome that weakness. So these are some of the things you know, I think I should, I should show you. Now let me go to the pestle. The pestle, this is what the pestle is about. Professor Francis Aguila of the Stanford University, also around 1960, you know, also was a, one that came up with this uh, uh, tool. But don't forget, the SEC is a tool for, for analyzing yourself and the external. The C in SEC, the context, analyzes your external. Okay? The skill, you know, is yours. Don't forget. Let me, let me just take you back there so you don't forget what you've learned. The skill is yours. The experience is yours. Relationship is yours. But the context is external. Now, when you go to, to, to SWOT, two are yours, strength and and weaknesses. When I say yours, can be individual, it can be organization, okay? It can be family, right? Then it can be ministry. Then the opportunities and threats are external. However, when you are looking at the pestle, the pestle analysis, you no, know, is all about the context, operating environment, or external. How external situation can affect all the competencies you have within your internal in your planning. So you must extract this. And there are six factors in this analysis, political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental. Consider under political, what are the policies and laws enabling or disenabling for your business, for your plans, for your new expansion, for instance, we know that there are policies that say if you want to move, you know, for uh, for for study, they said UK now is planning to uh, to tell you that look, okay, uh, maybe family members, you know, of Nigerians and Indians are now so much that ah, they are they are beginning to think uh, and think that maybe they may not allow family members to come, but even though that's that's not yet farmed up. But uh, you, you know, you must be abreast of what your political environment is, laws about tax, laws about labor, laws about trade, laws about migration. You must also consider the stability of the government. Will it enable your business, your career? You must, you must also consider things like corruption within the system. So these are political. Under economic, you must consider you know, the rate of growth. Don't forget if there is growth, there'll be much more disposable income. 
and you know, uh, uh, maybe also salaries have been better and all that. So you look at that. Please, other political, you can look at also election year and all that and all the dreams. The fear of, okay, we don't know who's coming in. So a lot of investors will hold their money. If you, are, if you are in that business and you're looking for foreign direct investors, that may not be the time to launch for. You know, so all of these things you must be able to think about. Economy, you know, I've said, look at everything that has to do with economy, uh, inflation, interest rates, you know, employment, the JAPA, you know, uh, <laughs> you know uh, syndrome, you know, mo people moving out. You know, if key technicals, you know, uh, uh, officers and, and professionals are moving out, and those are the people you need. So how would you, because of these economic employment factors, how would you therefore survive? And if you are someone who is used to the brick and mortar, would you rather turn into virtual? So wherever they are, they, they can still be your staff. I had em employees, you know, who were still my staff, even though they were in UK, US, you know, you know whilst I was in one of my last employment. So this Japa issue is not new. The only thing is that it has become big today. Employability also. Is there, no, uh, they are in employment, but there is no job. So, you know, it, it's, it's mentally distressing because, you know, it's like, you know, you know uh, the, the, being paid without you exercising your creativity is, is demeaning. Or, or employability in terms of you don't have the adequate skill for the job you are on. So you must consider all of this. Okay. You know, so if the employability, you know, uh, level is low, what do you do? in the environment. Social as to population and all the indices, the aging, the career views, you know, the lifestyle, cultural barriers, the demographics of your target audience, their psychographics, how they think, their mindset, their media habits, the kind of media they consume. Today, a lot of people have moved from the tabloid, you know, uh, of, of yesterday, the newspapers of it, to the social media. If you want to target your audience, where do you target them today? Who are your audience? And so all of this you must consider under the social. And don't forget, it changes with time. It changes all of this context and operating environment, which we call the place in purpose. It changes. So you must monitor it time and time again. I sent you a report made by one, one expert in Nigeria, okay, who, who has a lot of relationship working for for other business school and likewise Lagos Business School, I've sent you those things. You will find that he did, you know, a, 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 a review of the year 2022 using this framework. And likewise, he postulated to possible things that can happen in terms of opportunities and threats in 2023. And, and if you read it very well, you can, you, it can help you take position and, and leverage on all the opportunities that you know these experts you know uh discuss and foresee might come out in the election year 2023 so technology as a factor you must look at things like are there incentives if you want to maybe go into technology you know uh i add of recent that um this this uh, uh serena williams invested almost several uh, you know billions of dollars even in a startup here in nigeria okay is it smart or so you know, you know it's it's huge and don't forget you know flutter wave you know uh not very long ago also you know received a a massive investment from foreign direct invest so it's a growing sector so if it's a growing sector do i want to move there you will not ask your questions is my business, don't forget, whatever business you're doing today, please listen very well. What, whatever business or profession you are doing today, every profession today is technology delivering on the service you're doing. For instance, if you're a bank, banker, you are not in banking business anymore. You are in technology business delivering banking service. If you are a teacher, you are in technology business delivering teaching service or education service. You, if you're an HR, you are a technology, <laughs> you are a technology business delivering human resource services. 
So please understand this. If you therefore do not understand technology, it will sweep you off. Look at the innovation, look at the automation. Where am I? What is my exposure and experience? Issues of cybersecurity is critical. Issue of, 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 uh, uh, of, of research and development activity, you know, in your company or also, you know, by yourself, you must look at that. Today, almost every, everything we do depends on data, internet. Is it available for you to quickly do your business? local and international, if you want to ex expand your, your frontiers, you want to scale your business across border, how strong is your internet speed? What kind of internet providers do you have? Will it be a, an enabler or a disenabler to your business? You must look at this, it's an environmental thing. Then the legal, there are a lot of antitrust laws, labor laws, diversity, diversity and inclusion laws. How strong is it and how strong can it affect your business? I, I add under the DI, diversity and inclusiveness, you know, one multinational in Nigeria brought in, you know, a, a foreigner and they found that the foreigner was an LGBT person. But don't forget, we have a discrimination law in code in, in, in most of Africa, also Nigeria, that does not publicly recognize this. And there, there is even is it 14 years or so imprisonment for some people. No, at least in Nigeria. They are, you know, it, they, they, they asked to find a way of excusing the guy, paying him good sum, you know, because look, they don't want an infringement that can cause also the guy to go to prison. So these are things you must understand. How do I operate as an HR within that context, you know, you know, of local laws and within you know, the environment of the world that is celebrating these kinds of, of laws. So you must, you must be local. You are, you, are, you, are, you are globally focused, but locally operating. But you must know that local laws affect your business. And so you must subscribe to them. What of copyright laws? If you are someone who is into a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity and all that, how does copyright law protect you? Can they easily steal your songs and all, that, all of this? Can they steal my materials? Like, okay, so what of data pr protection? People in HR in particular, don't forget data protection is very critical now. There are laws globally and locally that you must protect data. If you are a WhatsApp admin, you know, there are laws that makes you, you know, uh, accountable, you know, you know for, for, for those on the platform. So you must protect and, and safeguard so that people don't, don't fish and, and steal their data. In these days of post, post COVID, Health and safety concerns have become, you know, you know are, are very, very important. Laws around them, it, you know, it, it might affect how you change your policies, how you change your systems in your organization. What of customer safety? So these are, these are all things you must consider that are, can affect your business profitability, affect your business continuity, affect your business sustainability. And don't forget, I said, you must treat your, your life as a business. Then the last one on the pestle is the consideration of, of your environment. That's E, environmental. The weather, you know, is it enabling, is it enabling? The climate change, you know, you know uh, we, are, we have global warming now, has it affected? You know, uh, ethical standards. Don't forget, you know, a person like um, the Tesla boss, you know, Elon Musk, you know, his company was, you know, they, 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 they recently, you know, had an uprising because animal you know, uh, 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 lovers said that he was not treating the, the, the dying monkeys or the animals they, you know, for, you know, from which they get the skin. He wasn't treating those who are dying you know, uh, uh, humanely. <laughs> and and you know, it became a, a major roar in, in America. So much that look, the shareholders, so their share will not fall. The shareholders of Tesla, that is Elon Musk company, the shareholders said, you know, the company should begin to look for alternatives, you know, to make, you know, uh, leather for their electric cars rather than original animal, animal skin. So that's how ethical standards can work. Another, you know, example, you know, you know uh, around Volkswagen and, and, uh, and Tesla again in, in China, there is a region in China you know, where, you know, a, a lot of, you know, uh, minority Muslim 
groups, okay, you know, are, are, are forced, put into forced labor. The major, you know, a, a Muslim group in America, okay, you know, now, you know, uh, raise, ro rose up, you know, uh, a, a, you know, an agitation and they push it to, to, the, to their Senate that, you know, uh, companies from America must not go and cite com companies there in that lo locality. But Tesla, because it's, a, it's one of the big locality and labor is cheap, Tesla went to cite his company there. And you know that there was a lot of uproar. You know, it's still ongoing now. You know, the same thing happened to Volkswagen. Volkswagen, you know, uh, CEO wanted to defend himself. Do you know that it led to the fall in, in share price and all that for, for Volkswagen. So I'm saying, you no, know, these are ethical things. These are you know, you must, NGO, NGO non-governmental pressures and all that. You must consider them. You know, you know uh, recycling and, and, and disposal, how does it affect your business? Sustainability issue, how do I affect your business? In global warming, you know, these things, don't forget that, you know, uh, the profitability of companies measured in what we call the triple P's today. Profit, people, and planet. It's not only about profit anymore. Okay, Pro profit, how to do finance, people, how to do with the social impact, giving back to the society, how it affects even uh, uh, the people doing the business, the, the people in your employment, the, 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 the host community. Then the planet is the environmental issue. So, you know, a, a good aerated company must, must sustainably have aerating in all of these three areas. So these are the critical things. So in summary, I'm saying you must look at how you leverage your strengths and the opportunities of the person on the outside. You must look also how you leverage your strength to minimize the threats of the person on the outside while also you must ensure that your weaknesses will not stop you from, from leveraging on the opportunities of the person. So is it that you will delegate, you will, you will outsource or whatever strategy, you know, you must not let your weakness stop you from leveraging on the, you know, personal opportunities. Likewise, you know, if it's, you want to, you want to look at the relation of threats and weakness, you must also find a way of fixing your weaknesses so that they don't constitute a threat of real impact that can that can create you know a flaw in your business or you know or running out of business. So this is very very important. Let me just you know uh, this I've spoken to okay this still the same thing uh, in a way all right. Uh, let me say this all right. I don't forget in our purpose statement we talked about. Yeah, uh, in a planning statement, we talked about purpose, we talked about uh, the, the people and talked about place. You know? And I said, yeah, you must also look at how you use your strength. You know, you build a, a, a fit for purpose strength profile. You know, you ask yourself, what are the strengths and skills that are already relevant to your purpose that you have? Okay, you make a list of your talents, aptitudes, competences, which is both behavioral and technical in your passion and as well as your personality and your, and your makeup, you know, how do all of these resources that I have, how can they help me to leverage and to achieve my purpose? And so you must look at that, okay? You also think about your people, the people in your network and all that, how they, can they help me to achieve my purpose? So I'm just letting you to know how you can tie even your SWOT with your plans and your purpose statement. So this is very important. So, so this is the assignment. And, and we can go into discussion for the next nine minutes or so. So these assignments are what you will take home. And I want you to work on that. What are your own strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? What are your threats? Then you will, you know, you will also juxtapose that against your objective, your purpose in life. Strengths that will help me to deliver on my purpose. Weakness that may hinder me from achieving my purpose. Opportunities around my environment based on my strengths. Threats around my environment based on my weaknesses. You must, you must put this together. So this does your assignment. So I want us to speak in the next nine or 10 minutes. 
Let's speak, you have learned about three tools. The first tool is a, is a CERC, S-E-R-C. The second is the SWOT. The third is the PESL. These are tools for planning. Tools that can help you to move from where you are to where you want to get to. Tools that can help you to structure your future. And if you know how to use them well, they will help you not only personally, not only family, not only ministry, but also organizational wide. So please, this assignment, you know, uh, I will, we have, you, you all have my, uh, you all have my, what's it called? You have my WhatsApp number. So do this assignment, please. Even though the class is ending today, those who want me to give them feedback, do this assignment and send to me. Don't forget, do your SWOT analysis. You know, then I want you, you know, in rounding up this assignment to tell me how your strength will help you to achieve the purpose, the plan you have for your future. Do, do for me a five-year range plan against which you will juxtapose your SWOT. Identify weaknesses that can. So the first thing you will write is, this is my, my plan for the next five years. Just like a, like a mission statement okay, of your plan. Then juxtapose against this, this uh, framework and send to me so I can give you feedback and I can help you out. That's the pro bono I will give you. Okay, let's ask questions. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. Let's discuss. How has it been? It's been loaded. I've told you, you know, I, it's heavy. Uh, um, um, and this is still a toe in the water, I will tell you. you know, there's a lot to do in terms of those tools, you know, uh, that that cannot be done in a one hour class, but you know, at least you have a good board's eye, board's eye view of it and you can run with it you know, as a starter now. All right, thank you. Yes, great, great. Oh, thank you for that feedback. Okay, Tari, please unmute your mic, unmute your mic, unmute your mic. Let's go. Tari, oh, I thought, Okay, uh, okay um, I've unmuted my mic. Okay, you're welcome. I was, I was actually saying that it's a really wonderful session. Oh, thank you. I mean, I know about a PESTO and I know about SWOTS, but I'm hearing of um, SEROC yes. for the first time by it's, Jewish it, person. It, it, it's and, a rare uh, one. And that's why I said I, I want to give you a pro bono tonight. I know that yes. most people don't know about it. Yes. And it's really packed for me. I'll go back and actually do the assignments that you have stated and I, I hope I get good mentorship from you. Thank you. Okay, great, great, you will. But, but please, you know, um, let the assignments be linked to your plan for 2023 to 2000, I said five years, okay? 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. So those five years, what, where you want to see yourself in various areas of your life. Now, extra your strengths, weakness, threats, and opportunities so that we can both work on what you can do to, to get there, okay? You're welcome. Okay, any other person? Okay, K Bangboy, thank you. Okay, you can unmute, you can unmute, great. You can unmute, please. Yes. Okay, sir. Um, thank you so much. This this seemed like a mini MBA. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you was ready. <laughs> very, yeah. very, 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 very insightful. You're welcome. I I thank you so much for sharing. I like um, I I jotted something here when you said that uh, success without plan is a mere fluke, mm. and we really see. A lot of flukes around because when you ask people about their success, mm. they really can't share any plan or whatever they whatever uh, they did. They don't know, know how they got there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, uh, look, wonderful session. Thank you so much, sir. Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. People who lack knowledge and who do not plan, they wait for miracles. Mm. It is hard. I'm a spiritual person. But let me tell you something. People who lack knowledge, they don't receive inspiration because you have no relationship even with the higher authority God. If you are in constant relationship, you will receive 
you know, constantly knowledge, information that you need to plan and to take action. You are stranded and waiting for miracle when there is no consistent relationship where you receive adequate knowledge and information. That's the problem. Mm. So spirituality, as I've told you, the proof of it is that in, in the first instance, you are receiving time on time and time basis, adequate knowledge, inspiration, and direction, which you can use to plan. Have you ever wondered why, for instance, God calls you co-laborers with him? That is, he is laboring, you, are, you should be laboring all this. You should don't leave everything to him. That's another day, I'll tell you something. Else. All right, amazing. So guys, you know, uh, so next steps, you know, for those who need services on planning, on career, business, you know, life and relationship, you can get in touch with me. You can take this screenshot. And if you like, you know, if you don't have my uh, details before, but, you know, I know all, everyone is here. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. You can talk. You know, and likewise, there are several aligned webinars to this. Okay. Um, there's a mind shift for personal and corporate advantage. I am looking at this on the Christmas Eve between five and seven is a mind shift seminar. You know, I want you to please tell your friends and also attend five to seven West African time. Mind shift for personal is a mind shift. I'm going to take you on a neurolinguistic journey. Okay. Uh, in this, in this seminar, then there are other seminars, you know, you know, that have not fixed date for goal setting for I, performance will do that maybe early next year you want to to, to to help people as they set their goals then actionable personal development plans you know but you can choose whichever ones you have you know uh once you make payment for them i'll tell you dates you know uh you know you can choose on on my seller app then also there's a power of discipline in goal setting then there's a visioning to fulfill life and organizational goal you'll find that look these are all you know i order leadership training okay uh they, they may not speak directly to uh, his HR, his management, it's general, okay? It is it, because I want it to cut across board, you know, and, and to help all of you. So let's connect and build mutually benefiting relationships. You know, uh, please, these are my handles on a Facebook timeline uh, page, um, uh, LinkedIn. I, I would love you to give me some recommendation on my LinkedIn. Let's, let's link, link up on LinkedIn. Don't forget, you know, in the SEC, you know, relationship is very, very critical. So what, what is the quality of your relationship? What's the depth of your relationship? Let's link up and let's share, you know, you can screen, you know, can search my name on the, on the LinkedIn and, and, and also give me some recommendations. Send me some friendship requests and, and let's join. I'm also on Twitter and on Instagram. So that's for me tonight, for me tonight, for me tonight. So if uh, all is done, I will want to say thank you. I want to say thank you, I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tonight. That's all I have to do for tonight.